Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this lesson, we are going to learn about uh, setting up Ansible on Visual Studio Code. In almost last six, seven videos, we learned on how to create a Ansible playbook using just VI editor on CentOS. Now we are going to use some sort of ID which is going to help us in speeding up our development journey of creating Ansible playbooks. Now I prefer Visual Code. If you want to use any other ID, you are free to use that as well. But if you want to follow along, please go ahead and install Visual uh, Studio Code. So you can go to code visualstudio.com slash download and again depending on the operating system which you are using go ahead and download this specific software so in my case i am on windows so i have downloaded this software and installed it installation instruction is quite easy so i'm not going to show it on the screen but once you install it and then you just go to uh, start menu open up visual studio code and this is the screen which you are going to see now a couple of important thing which we need to know here is that we will need some sort of extension in order to help us in uh, speeding up our uh, writing playbooks journey okay so go to extensions click here on extension and then search for ssh then use remote ssh uh, click on remote ssh you are going to see option of installing here right now you see uh, i'm getting option of uninstall because i have already installed it okay in your case you are going to see option of installing it so go ahead and install it once you install it and enable it then you are going to see this remote explorer icon here okay which you can see here right now uh, so what we are going to do is using remote uh, explorer we are going to remotely connect to our uh, ansible control node server so here you can see uh, probably i can in fact delete it but uh, it's quite easy so you can just uh, once you click here you are going to see on SSH uh, just click here on new remote connection and then you just need to provide the username and IP address of the server which you want to connect to okay so for example let's say I want to connect to uh, 192.168.1.20 so this is what I'm going to give and let's say I want to connect with using username Ansible so we are going to give that detail okay so for example when I wanted to connect to uh, control node which is on 192.168.1.19 this is what I gave and hit on uh, hit enter and then it is going to ask select SSH configuration file to update so we can select uh, this one which is C drive users VIG the first one okay again depending on uh, your operating system you might see different options so just select the file where you want to store SSH configuration okay so in this case uh, you can see now we are getting the message that host has been successfully added and you can click on open config file and here you can see all the all the servers which has been config, configured to connect to remotely now what i see here is i see the same entry two times because i just added one right now one entry was already there okay so i just removed one and once you do that once you you know do that entry after that you are going to see this and then here you can see uh, it is showing Ansible. I'm just going to click on this arrow in order to connect to the remote server. Now you can see in order to connect, it is asking for the password. So I'm going to provide the password. Once you provide the password, you can see, okay, uh, we can reload the window. It is giving some, some, you know, just follow the on screen, on screen instruction. If it is giving some error, you can just refresh it. In my case, you know, it is giving error because I already, uh, I had already opened it. So I had set up is actually uh, set up all this quite a long ago, but I didn't really want to jump onto this one because it is better if you learn uh, creating Ansible playbooks on a simple notepad file or notebook file or, or using BI editor and understand the concept before jumping into anything else. Uh, so let me just clear everything. So here you can see the home directory which we are connected to is slash home slash Ansible uh, because we provided Ansible user. But one more thing which you can do is uh, you can see here we have option of terminal. Now from visual studio code also you have access to that terminal so if you don't see this terminal option here you can go to terminal terminal and, and click on new terminal so now here on terminal you can run whatever command which you were running on basically on the remote system so here if i do pwd you can see right now my present working directory is slash home slash ansible now one more extension which we are going to install is go to extension again and then search for ansible okay this is what we we will need click on ansible and you can see ansible from Red Hat. Now this is the extension which we must install if you are working with you know, Ansible playbooks. So just go ahead install it and enable it. Once you do that all you need to do is you, you can just go ahead go back to remote explorer connect to your uh, connect to the server which you were connected and then yeah I just opened up another window actually I shouldn't have done that but yeah once you do that whenever you are saving any file with .yml extension it is going to basically uh, automatically detect that it's an Ansible file and then it is going to start giving you suggestions uh, when you're writing Ansible playbook. 
okay so here you can see we already have whatever all uh, ansible playbooks we had created on the server all of those here you can see it is showing little uh, little you know blue or whatever color it is that icon so if i click here on create users you can see this is how we are going to uh, see our ansible playbook now okay uh, so again this is just a simple playbook now let's say if you are adding one more task it is going to give you some sort of suggestions okay so for example if i put name uh, install a package if i write pac you know you can see it is giving you basically options of uh, choosing the modules which are already available in ansible so for example here i can just write package and here you can see it is suggesting ansible.builtin.package so uh, which I can select and then I can again uh, we can uh, let's say if we want to install git we can tell that we want to install git and we can also you can you can see you know as and when I'm typing for example I just started typing state and it is already giving you option of typing state so you can just press tab and then auto completion is going to complete it for you and here you can see when I type P, I already know what are the options which are available. So options which are available is either present or privilege. So I'm just going to select present because we want to install this software. Okay, so that is how we can create or we can basically create all the Ansible playbooks efficiently. And then if you want to run this one, you can just go ahead, go, go back to the terminal here. And then all you need to do is do Ansible playbook and then hyphen I hosts and then just give the name of this file for example this file is called create users .yml. create hyphen users .yml. okay if i run it whatever you were seeing there on the remote server the same option or same uh, everything is going to be same okay so it, it is nothing different than what we were doing previously the only thing which we are doing right now is we are using visual studio code to connect to our remote server which is ansible control node and then we are uh, executing everything still on the control node now the help which we are getting here is that we have now a couple of extension which is ansible which is helping us auto filling all of these options and also if you click on for example here you can see this is the module name which is available ansible.builtin package if i hover over here you can see we are getting documentation of this as well so again there are additional advantages as well which we are going to discuss later on but i for now i just want to uh, get you started from using ansible using basically visual code and ansible so thank you so much for watching see you again in the next video